Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about Twilight Zone, the movie. But before we get into that, remind you guys, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on all my socials, all those links will be in the description below. And if you have any suggestions for movies that I should review this month for my 31 Nights of Halloween, please put those in the comments below as well. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get into the video. So, Twilight Zone, the movie. Now, I remember seeing this movie a few months ago for the first time. Um, all the way through. I've seen a little bit of clips here and there. I've seen the John Lithgow, um, at least little snippets of that portion of the, uh, the movie. Um, but I remember seeing one scene in particular with uh, Dan Aykroyd. It's like in a car, and he goes, you want to see something really scary? And then he does the whole thing. Um, yeah. You know, obviously Twilight Zone, the show, series, you know, was in the, in the 50s, the, the, the 60s era of TV. You know, black and white, you know, it was kind of one of those early, um, early, uh, science fiction kind of shows, um, that they re it's been remade and rebooted a ton, but they made this movie back in 83, it had four different directors, you had, uh, you know, John Landis, who was basically, um, running the project, basically, he was the head of the project, um, you have George Miller, who directed the Obviously, the uh, Bad Max movies and stuff like that. And then you got Steven Spielberg, um, who obviously had Jaws, um, Indiana Jones, stuff like that. And then you have Joe Dante, who directed Gremlins, uh, Piranha, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but this, this movie, I don't know if it's, it's infamous, but I feel like it's not liked. Among I guess, I guess if you're fans of the original show, some people might not like it, but I always thought it was a it was a pretty in interesting movie. Um, it strings you know four stories, different stories together. Uh, a couple of them are remakes, and I think one of them might have been an original, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, this movie has a lot of history, has a lot of tragedy, unfortunately. Um, if you're not familiar with the story in the first little uh, short story that they tell, um, actor Vic Morrow who um, in the scene, in the in the shortest story, he plays like this guy who's like, who, who lost his promotion for his job, and he starts going off about, you know, different people, you know, black people, Jewish people, and stuff like that. He starts just going off, and basically, he, he leaves the bar that he's meeting his friends where he starts having this rant. And then he leaves the bar, and he steps into, you know, I'm guessing ninth, early, mid-World War II era Germany, and he gets tracked down by Nazis. And then he he gets um, subsequently killed um, by these Nazis. Then he jumps into another world where he's a black guy and he's being hung. He's almost he's he's getting uh, attempted to be hung by these KKK members and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's a pretty intense opening. Uh, well, that's not the, the the official opening. The official opening. Is Dan, Dan Aykroyd, uh, the guy in the car, and they're they're he's they're asked playing road games, and then Dan Aykroyd's like, "You want to see something really scary?" And then he you know becomes a monster, and it goes into the uh, the intro of like the TV show, um, and then it gets into that the first one. Um, unfortunately, if you don't know the story about that that first um, of the the first you know, short story that they tell, um, that actor, um, they were there was supposed to be longer, like a longer uh, portion of the story um unfortunately uh they had a helicopter that was on set and it got too close to some power lines um where they were filming and it hit the power line landed in the water um the actor was in the water across like this pond because he had two kids i think it was supposed to be like they're in like a vietnam like little village thing and he was supposed to be saving these two kids going across the pond and then the, the helicopter hit the power line fell into the water and ended up killing uh, Vic Morrow and uh, the two actors who were not supposed to actually be on set at that late at that time. So um, all kinds of rules were broken. John Landis went to court over it. It was a whole whole thing. Um, unfortunately, somebody had to, like I said, people had to die um, for the movie to happen, which is unfortunate. Um, it should have never happened. But, um, you know, I think what we got in the movie is actually pretty solid. Um, and I think if it would have went on too long, it would have been too redundant you know it would have been a movie that could have been a movie just in itself and not in all honesty so um i'm surprised they didn't 
try to or they had that ice concept and then they tried to make that into a movie but i think um what we got in the movie um is fine um you had a good uh good way to start off the movie and then you have another one after that which takes place at a retirement home you got scatman crothers who if you don't remember he was um the old black the old black guy in the shining he was talking to danny about his powers and everything um, he's an old old man. He goes to this nurse uh, to this uh, retirement home for these for these older folks, and he's like, I was like, you gotta be young, you gotta have a young mindset. And then he's like, they say we're we'll play games, and he's like, what's your favorite game to play? And he's like, kick the can. So they go outside after everybody's asleep, and they play kick the can. And these people who are these old people are like, I wish I could be young again. And then he actually turns them like young, or you know, I guess. Some of them are like, I guess some of them are different ages, but like one girl's like eight, one kid. I don't know how old he's supposed to be, but he's like really tall, so he looks like he's like 15, but I don't know. Um, but this was like a, it's like a nice one. It's like, um, there's not all the um, Twilight Zone episodes are scary per se, but this one was a nice one. Um, it was nice after that. Um, pretty intense opening one. Um, it's a nice one to um, to uh, to follow up, but it's weird because all the other ones are somewhat scary or horror themed. This one isn't horror themed, and so it's just weird. It just kind of doesn't fit within these stories um, that they tell. Um, but everybody, all the older cast does fine. Um, when you get these kids, the the kids, the adults become kids again. You have this one girl, she's talking like she, I'm guessing the character is Jewish, but she's talking like, like, like hair all it. This is pretty, it's, it's pretty funny because she's trying to imitate her older self, even though she, she's a kid. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty cute little short story. Like I said, it doesn't, it just doesn't fit within the other horror toned, um, chapters within the, in this movie. Um, then you have the next one, which is the, um, this woman who's a teacher, she goes to this town, trying to, she gets lost. She ends up meeting this kid who runs his bike over. And by the way, I don't know if it was a kid actor or if it was a stunt double or what, but this kid hits, he, she runs him, she runs his bike over. This kid hits the bumper. I'm like, I hope that kid was okay. Like, I hope he didn't just bust his head on the bed on a damn bumper. Could have been a doll frog, I know, but I don't, I don't know. So, um, but it's just, you see it, it's like, oh damn, it's like, he just, Max his head on the bumper of the car. Um, but anyway, this this kid, um, she feels bad for him, takes him back to his house, and we notice right away that this family is kind of weird. Like everybody's kind of just odd and behaving weird around this kid. And his birthday, uh, he says it's his birthday, and this, that, and the other. And we know that we we were we find out that he has powers, but he could like make make anything happen. And he uh, he like turns. Um, he puts, he like, his sister gets mad at him, and he turns, puts her in the TV with the cartoon world, and he makes, like, the cartoons come out of the TV, and he switches the, the, the house around, and it's pretty interesting. It's where you get that iconic, like, bunny that we see, um, where you get that iconic, uh, shot of that, and by the way, the effects, the effects in all these are pretty good, um, I, I think this one has the most effects heavy. Besides, you, you do have the one at the end, which is probably the most famous um, recreation, because this one's also a recreation from one of the original ones. But I personally, I think this one is is my, I think this one's probably my favorite. Um, it's my favorite because I think it, it's take, it takes the most risk with like effects and like story and everything. And there's some really creepy imagery, like the little the girl where you just see her eyes, like the eyes are like kind of bloodshot and she's watching TV. And then you pan up and then she's got no mouth. It's like, that shit's fucking terrifying. It freaked me out when I first watched it. Um, but I think this one's probably my favorite of all of all four of them. Um, but I think the next one is probably the most iconic out of all of them. And it's probably one of the most iconic uh, of the original series of uh, Twilight Zone episodes. Probably the most iconic out of all of them. Um, and that one's, you know, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. Uh, you got John Lithgow basically plays the William Shatner role. And he, he, you know, is very manic and he's scared to be out in the plane. And he looks out the window and he sees this being flying on the wing of the airplane. 
and he starts going crazy. And it's uh, it's it's fun, it's entertaining, and but I think I was I don't know I can't remember how the first one originally goes, but this one he like shoots out the window of the airplane and and all this stuff, and then you see at the very end he gets hauled off on a stretcher in a straight jacket. Like this guy's fucking nuts, and he gets taken in an ambulance, and then we see Dan Aykroyd again, and he's like, "You want to see something really scary?" And that's how you end the movie. Um, fun movie, definitely really well um, executed when it comes to like a short story. Um, like I said, all four of them are really good, but I think the only one that doesn't fit, even though it's good, the only one that doesn't fit is the the retirement home one because it's kind of it's kind of an interesting story, but it's not horror themed or no horror. Like there's not a tone of of horror in it, you know. I don't, the only way I can think about it is oh, they become kids. Right, he he makes them kids, right, and they're like, oh, I want to be, I want to be old again, and then they somehow the magic doesn't work like normal, and they, they become like they get old, but their bodies, they have their young bodies, and so they become contorted or something like that. But they don't, they don't do that, so they just become adults again. I guess, um, I guess it's a uh, that's just how the magic is. Um, but yeah, I really like this movie. I think if you get you probably can watch it with you with the uh, kids, you know, middle school age. But I think when you get high schooler age, probably the better way, better better way age to watch it. Um, I think it's a good start horror movie. It's not like a horror movie, you know. It's not like your Halloween or your Friday the Thirteenth or something like that. Um, but it's a good start, little scary movie for the family. I think everybody could watch it. And everybody could appreciate it. And that's why, kind of like a lot of movies that I've been talking about this month so far, like movies that the family could watch because Halloween is a Believe it or not, it's not a kid's holiday, it's a family holiday. Everybody can enjoy dressing up, everybody can enjoy eating candy, and everybody can enjoy watching movies. So I think this is a fun movie to watch, throw in. It's a throwback for the 80s, you know, and you get to see some of, some of the actors who aren't around anymore. You can see Dick Miller, um, you know, and it's just a, it's just a fun movie, I think. Um, I think, like I said, everybody can enjoy it for something, so... That's what I think about this movie. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are on Twilight Zone, the movie. And let me know what your thoughts are on the original series. Uh, if I Maybe one day I might talk about a couple episodes of that show. So let me know what your thoughts are on those. And also, like again, remind you to please follow me, uh, link, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And like I said, recommend some movies you want me to watch in the comments below. And hopefully I will get to those. If not, maybe I'll do this again next year. We'll see. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.